this video, I'll show you how to set up and configure a self-hosted N8N environment through Hostinger, so you can fully skip paying the N8N subscription fees. And as a bonus, I'll show you how to get a free website name to attach to your N8N instance, meaning you can easily reach it anytime you want without having to spend the extra $10 for a domain name. So, first of all, follow the link in the description to get a Hostinger N8N hosting server. You can start with the cheapest option and you'll be able to upgrade anytime you want. Additionally, use the code EMITREVIEWS to get 10% off your order. After purchase, it's time to configure your server. Skip the additional services, it'll just eat up your resources and create a password for your virtual private server instance. But a password really isn't a good way to protect your VPS. It's like saying a passphrase at the door every time you want to enter. Anyone can hear and copy it. A much better solution is to set up an SSH key by clicking on add an SSH key. Then simply go into the start menu of Windows and in the search bar type in CMD. Now you can copy and paste the command line from Hostinger to your terminal. Pasting works by right-clicking the mouse in the Windows terminal. Now, using the arrow keys on your keyboard, delete the example email that's between the quotes and type in your email address, then press Enter. Now press Enter again to use the default key location. I suggest you protect your key with another password, but if you don't want to, keep it empty and press Enter. I'll protect mine with the passphrase and press enter. Now, if I navigate to users and view the .ssh folder, remember this folder could be hidden, so you need to activate the show hidden folders on Windows. Now, inside this folder, there are some files that we just generated. To continue, right-click the .pub file and open it with Notepad or any text editor. Then simply copy and paste the content of the file to Hostinger and give it any name you want. This is like generating a lock on a server and creating a key on your computer. Only computers with the key present in them, in this case the one that we just generated, can enter the server. So it's much more better than simply having a password. Once you're done, click on Finish Setup and Hostinger will create your server automatically. Additionally, they'll install the N8N software from GitHub onto your server without you having to do anything. After the installation is over, click on Manage VPS and you can skip this survey or fill it out. It doesn't really matter for what we're doing here. This is your server control dashboard and you can see the N8N app is already installed. If you click on Manage app, you'll be taken to the account creation screen. So just fill out these details to create your N8N account and make sure the email is real because you will get a verification mail. After you're done, just fill out the survey again and click on get started. Then you should click on send me a free license key because verifying your account gives you more features. And you basically want those features since they don't cost anything. To verify, all you need to do is click this button in the email right here. So Hostinger kinda makes this ridiculously easy. And at this point, your N8N instance is already set up and you can start using it. But as you can see, the domain name is complete gibberish. So let's add a free subdomain like emmet.serverpit.com instead of this mess. To get your free subdomain, you need to visit freedns.com afraid.org and register for a free account. Your user ID and password are the most important parts here, as you'll need them to log in into the dashboard. Once you finish creating your account, you should have received an email with an account activation link. Once activated, click on the Add Subdomain button. Now you need to choose how your new address will look. This type of domain is always made up of two parts, the subdomain that you can freely choose and the domain that someone else has bought and just added to this public list for everyone to use. Now we need to choose whose domain we'll be piggybacking off. 
So click on the domains list and then many, many more available. Now click on the shared domain registry text. As you can see, there's a ton of domains added to this registry made available for public use. But some of them are semi-private, meaning the owner will have to approve your name before you can start using it. But some of them are fully public, meaning that once you set it up, it automatically gets approved and you can immediately start using it. That's why I like using the public ones better. You can browse this list on your own, but the one I found easy to remember and somewhat thematic is serverpit.com. But domains like my.2 are an excellent choice as well. For this tutorial, I'll go with serverpit.com and the subdomain part, I'll just call emit. So the full free domain will be emit.serverpit.com. Next, we need to point this domain to our Hostinger server. So go back to Hostinger, click on settings and navigate to the IP addresses tab. Here you'll see your IPv4 address, so copy this IP address and paste it into the destination section on FreeDNS. Finally, just type in the captcha and hit save. If you're using a public domain, it'll get approved automatically and you can start using it immediately. But here's where a Hostinger is trying to pull a sneaky on us. If you try to add this free domain to their dashboard, you would get an error message. Since Hostinger really doesn't want you to use the free subdomain, they want you to buy a name from them instead. But the best part about having a virtual private server, or a BPS, is the fact that we can go inside and edit the files manually. So open up the CMD once again, copy your root access and paste it in by right clicking. Then press enter, type in yes and type in your SSH passphrase if you've created one. I'll leave all of the commands I'll use in the pinned comment down below so you can just copy and paste. But the first thing you want to do here is shut down your N8N instance by typing in docker compose down. Then let's access the docker compose configuration file via the nano editor. Using the arrow keys, scroll down until you see labels. Using the arrow keys again, navigate to the subdomain and domain sections. We need to replace these variables with our new free subdomain. So delete everything that's inside these symbols and type in your free subdomain. Now navigate to the bottom here and do the same thing. Make sure even the parentheses and the dollar signs are gone. It's just your website name. Finally, in the environment variables, you'll want to add the same thing in the N8N host section and the webhook URL section. So it should look like this. Finally, press Ctrl S to save this and Ctrl X to exit from this nano editor. Okay, so we're almost done here. By this point, we have everything in place. We just need to start the N8N application once again. So type in docker compose up dash D. And if you visit your website name, like emmet.serverpit.com, you'll get redirected to your instance. Cool, it works. We no longer have a gibberish website name. We didn't pay anything for it. And we bypassed the sneaky hostinger extortion methods. Now, if you ever want to update your N8N instance, because updates are rolling out and if you're self-hosting, it won't auto-update. Just access the terminal, run docker compose down to stop the application, type in docker compose pull to pull the newest files from GitHub to your server and start the application again using docker compose up dash D. So yeah, this is how you self-host a N8N instance and you're only paying $4.99 a month with a custom domain name. The best part is now you own a server. So you can use this server for whatever you want. Because yes, it is running a N8N instance, but it has more space and resources for other applications or websites as well. Basically, this server is yours. Do whatever you want with it. And you're not relying on like this extremely high priced service for scaling. You can just scale your server resources 
whenever you feel that you need them. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.